current state of automation for injection molders is injection molders are, are currently being asked to do a lot more automation, add a lot more value to the parts press side, whether that be with decoration, with assembly, packaging, uh, visual inspection, it's all happening as soon as the part comes out of the mold. So the major trends we see is customers are looking to do more and more above just the robot in the automation. They're looking at using the robots to, to package parts better or assemble parts more. They're looking just more and more to adding on to what basically the robots become our industry standard. What more can they do with the robots? Trends are current state of automation that I'm hearing over and over and over. It's labor, labor, labor. Uh, especially what a lot of jobs might be considered entry level factory labor that were traditionally done uh, with people coming in and manually moving or manipulating parts or assisting in the molding process. Uh, customers just can't find labor, they can't find uh, consistent, reliable labor. So uh, more than ever, we're getting phone calls, people saying, hey, can you help me with this? Uh, I, I've got 10 people uh, uh, that need to run this cell. Uh, can you help us reduce our labor uh, and uh, get some more reliable, uh, um, consistent product out? During COVID, uh, we, were, we were just nonstop. Uh, customers were looking for automated solutions. They were looking to keep their employees safe, socially distanced apart, and the robots and the automation equipment added, uh, added a lot to help them do that. So COVID impacted automation. It definitely, so we started seeing a skyrocket and more people wanting to do automation. So COVID affected our labor shortages. We've always had a labor shortage, but the regulations and safety protocols definitely amplified the labor shortages. Uh, we also see customers starting to insource or uh, reshore products from other companies. And to be competitive in the United States against the, the lower cost countries, you have to automate more. So we see customers going that direction. Uh, when COVID hit, I, I think what actually happened was a kind of a shock to me. I thought, this, this isn't going to be good, you know, uh, business is going to really drop off. In reality, uh, our, our business, we got extremely busy. Um, customers, again, more than ever wanted to automate and uh, get more efficiency, and they just were having problems with labor shortages. And one of the things that was interesting to me is, you know, we tend to all live in our own bubble. This isn't just uh, an American or North American issue, it's worldwide. So we found out from some of our partners that we work with that uh, this issue is going on all over the place. So the biggest challenges molders face right now is understanding what projects are best to go after. Uh, they're all running very lean with labor and, and during the labor shortage, finding people. So it's, it's being able to identify the right jobs and bring those in house, not bite off more than they can chew and bring in automated solutions that they know their staff can support for the long term. So the biggest challenge we see with customers, it's, I guess it's twofold. If it's a new customer, just getting them to understand what automation can do. Uh, the biggest thing we see challenge-wise, they're wanting to do stuff very fast. They're wanting to go into automation that they've never done before, and they want it done really fast. And it's, it's complicated to get those systems going as fast as they want. we see them wanting them. Okay, a lot of the issues, if you want to uh, automate, if you want to add some automation, or um, I would say are, um, you know, like a lot of times at retail you hear the expression location, location, location. What I hear is service, service, service. Do we have service people? Do you have a service network? How quick can I get an answer if I need something? Uh, another issue is uh, uh, space. A lot of customers, uh, they are looking to eliminate equipment that isn't very efficient. Can I take this out using automation instead of having these bulky things like uh, uh, tumblers that are maybe removing sprues and runners? I, I see automation for the next three to five years to just keep on an upward trajectory. Um, we find um, customers adding additional axes, servo wrists, quick change plates, a lot of visual inspection going on right now, a lot of automated assembly. So I, I, I don't see it slowing down at all.